we're going to look at these five relevant laws or guidance, specifically for behavioral telehealth reimbursement. So first up in 2008, the Ryan Hate Act came into the picture. Um, for anyone unfamiliar with the Ryan Hate Act, essentially, it's a law that limits prescribing controlled substances over telehealth. Um, a provider is generally prohibited from prescribing controlled substances over telehealth if the provider has never examined the patient in person before. There are a few important exceptions to this general rule, but the most important for our purposes is that by its own terms, it doesn't apply during a public health emergency. The Ryan Hate Act is still good law, and it will reemerge at the end of the PHE unless there's new legislation to change it. The Support Act was enacted in October of 2018. Um, its full name is the Substance Use Disorder Prevention that Promotes Opioid Recovery and Treatment for Patients and Communities Act. Well before the pandemic and PHE, the Support Act carved out an exception to the reimbursement factors. So under the Support Act, a patient being treated for SUD and co-occurring mental health conditions does not need to live in a rural area or have an appointment at a healthcare facility for the provider to be reimbursed. The patient can be located anywhere, including in their home. So the Support Act affects that fourth factor for where is the patient physically located. When we talk about the other exceptions or waivers during the PHE, know that these don't affect the SUD and co-occurring mental health disorder treatment carve-outs from the Support Act because they were in place before the PHE waivers. Here we get the Consolidated Appropriations Act enacted in 2020, but called the CAA of 2021. This legislation created a permanent exception for reimbursement for mental health services. So like the Support Act did for the SUD treatment, um, the CAA of 2021 makes it possible for providers to be reimbursed regardless of where their patient is located. But the legislature put in an additional requirement that for those mental health services to be reimbursed, the patient must have an in-person visit within six months before the provision of telehealth. And there are some narrow exceptions to this. Um, and remember that there, there are also the other factors for reimbursement, uh, provider type, service type, delivery type, these all still have to be met to be eligible for reimbursement. CMS added on to this six month rule in its 2022 Medicare physician fee schedule. In addition to having to see the provider in person at least once within the six months prior to obtaining telehealth services, CMS adds that after the telehealth visit, the patient needs to visit the provider in person again within 12 months. So CMS adds another in-person requirement here for reimbursement with some exceptions. Um, in addition to the 12 month in-person requirement, it also expands the modality of services that can be provided. So reimbursement is now possible for mental health services delivered via audio only telecommunications technology. So it's a trade-off. Um, expanded modalities on the one hand, uh, additional in-person requirements for eligible mental health services on the other. And the last piece of the timeline as it stands today, is the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2022. And this just became law on March 15th of this year. Um, this law doesn't add any permanent changes to the SUD and mental health provisions we discussed above, um, but it does add a roughly five month extension to the temporary telehealth provisions currently in place after the PHE ends. It's to give everyone a little room to figure out what's next.